Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Pocket 3, which is a tiny computer with an 8-inch touchscreen display, a convertible tablet-style design that lets you fold that back and use it like a tablet. And while it normally ships with Windows, you can see here that I am actually running Ubuntu on it. This is Ubuntu 21.10. I've also tested Fedora 35, and overall, it's reasonably easy to get a Linux distribution up and running on this device. So that's what I'm going to look at in this video. Um, you can find more information about this little computer in uh, at lilliputing.com. There's links in the description of the video and a link to the crowdfunding campaign. This particular configuration sells for about $1,000 and up during crowdfunding, but there are also lower price configurations starting at $650. So um, out of the box, there's just a few quirks when you try uh, running Ubuntu. So this is Ubuntu 10, 20. Uh, 1.10 running off of a flash drive, have not installed it to local storage here, haven't really tested battery life or anything else like that. The first thing that you might notice is that the display will be sideways out of the box and everything will look pretty tiny because the default resolution scaling is set to whoop, um, 100%. So it looks sort of like that, which on an 8-inch screen is a bit much. But I find that uh, by just rotating the display, and you can see here, it thinks that it's in portrait mode instead of landscape, which is a little bit funky, but it works. Uh, in portrait left orientation, everything looks fine. 150% scaling, things look pretty decent. Uh, out of the box, audio wasn't working, but just about everything else was. And I did, uh, thanks to some help from the Fox, who also is testing this thing, uh, figure out a way to get audio up and running. And uh, that allows us to do things like open up a web browser, maybe. Oops, Firefox is already running, it says. There we go. Actually, I actually think Firefox just crashed. Um, I'll show you the uh, touchpad is working. The stylus is working. And we can go to YouTube. find a video, and click play. The so audio and video are working as well. As our advertisements. What is a model? I think you can ask. There we go. Hi, this is Brad Linder. Uh, plug in. Now, HDMI input is uh, an interesting option because most- So basically, uh, most of the things that you want to work are working. Uh, I mentioned pen input is working, and you can see that I'm sort of dragging uh, around a cursor here. We can also open up an application like Inkscape, create a new document, and I can show you that pressure-sensitive input works as well. Um, automatic screen rotation is not working on this particular demo unit, and that's just because it doesn't have the hardware for it. The um, version that ships to customers should, however, support pressure or support uh, screen rotation. So you can see here, um, it does sort of respond to how hard or how light I press on the screen. And uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what it looks like out of the box running Ubuntu 20.10. Now, in terms of getting it to boot from uh, alternate from a flash drive, it's actually pretty simple. So I'll show you here that if I go into the well, let's go ahead and power this off. Remove the installation media. And I'm actually going to put in a different one. So in here we've got Fedora 35. And now at startup, I'm just going to hammer on the delete key. Didn't actually need to hammer that just yet because we were still shutting down. Let's go ahead and power up. And this should take us into the UEFI settings. Uh, now you'll notice here, everything is really pretty tiny, but uh, there are some nice advanced settings here. So you can configure the TDP modes 
to change it from 15 to 20 watts to 12 to 15 or 20 to 25. I don't know if all of these options will be available on the retail version that ships to backers of the crowdfunding campaign or to customers later on, but on the version that was sent to me, there are a lot of unlocked settings here in this setup utility. And you also have the option to choose your boot device. So instead of just booting from the built-in SSD, I'm gonna to choose to boot from that flash drive. I'm gonna say I wanna test Fedora. So uh, as I mentioned, this version has a Core i7 processor. It's got 1920 by 1200 pixel display. That processor is a Core i7-1195G7 processor. Um, 38.5 watt hour battery, HDMI, USB type C, um, USB type A, USB type A, and a headphone jack. And one of the most interesting things about this little computer, of course, is that it's got a modular port section here. So where the HDMI and USB are on the back here, there's normally actually a USB type A port. These are actually inputs allowing you to use this as a KVM switch or as a sort of portable connection to other computers. I have a separate video showing how that works, but basically I can use the display and the keyboard to control a server or another PC. Also has a ethernet. All right, so Ubuntu is up and running. We're gonna say we wanna try it instead of installing it. Again, the screen is sideways because uh, by default on a lot of devices that ship from uh, GPD and other companies making these sort of handheld style laptops, uh, the display orientation is just sort of automatically set to lens, uh, portrait mode instead of landscape mode. But all I need to do here is Open up the display settings, choose portrait left, and click apply. Keep changes. Now here, um, Fedora does not support fractional scaling, which means that, just adjusting this so that the uh, auto brightness looks better here, uh, I have a choice between 100% and 200% scaling, and that's it, out of the box at least. There might be some tweaks that you can make to, uh, to adjust that. But um, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work. I'm able to connect to the internet. Everything's pretty responsive. And again, when I'm using uh, out of the box, audio is not going to work. So if I wanted to play that video again, the video will play, but you won't hear anything. Uh, and it's just a bit of a hassle to, uh, to go through those steps on this video. So again, I'll post a link in the description that shows you what you would do to configure the audio to get it up and running. But again, you can see video playback is working. Uh, one other thing that this device has that you don't always find on handhelds is a webcam and it kind of works. Uh, there might be something that needs to change here. You can see that out of the box, the, uh, the viewfinder is really, really slow. So I can take a picture, but shooting video is kind of a non-starter here. Um, but it is detected at least, so that is positive. Um, so that is a quick look at Fedora and Ubuntu running on the uh, GPD Pocket 3. Again, you can find more details at lilliputing.com, a link in the description to the crowdfunding campaign, and it's uh, up for pre-order during crowdfunding for about 650 and up. And it's really one of the more interesting little computers that I've tested in a while. Um, something that you can use in a variety of different situations, thanks to a decent selection of ports, this modular port section that allows you to swap out uh, some ports for others, and, uh, and a convertible tablet style design. So um, yeah, check out the links in the description for more information. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at Linux running on the GPD Pocket 3.